The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Jeb Norris came into his isolated trading post and slammed the door behind him. The tall, slightly stooped man had a worried expression on his clean-cut features as he looked at his 18-year-old daughter, Mary. Here, yeah, honey. Let me help you into that coat. <laughs> Bearskin's not exactly lightweight, Dad. The coat weighs nearly as much as I do. Yes, but it keeps you good and warm, though. Well, the dogs are all ready. I got to hitch to the sled and set to travel. Thanks, Dad. Oh, I wish you didn't have to make these trips alone. It's a hard run every two weeks into Pine Crossing to pick up the mail and supplies. The mail alone is worth the trip. I'm always happy to get news from the outside. I like visiting the McDuffs and buying the supplies. It's kind of lonesome way out here with Rainier's cabin, the only one between here and town. A fine neighbor he is. Well, don't you worry about me. I can't help but worry with you on the trail alone four hours each way. Dad rat this bad leg of mine. I wish I could go with you. I'll be all right. I always have been. Hmm. Well, here's your mittens. Thanks. Now, Mary, if you happen to see Jack Rainier at the halfway point, you might tell him that he was wrong in saying I'd never sell my trading post. Tell him I got a buyer and he's meeting my price. I sure will. I'd like to see his face when he hears it. Won't it be wonderful to go back home again? Yes, sir, honey. We'll go back to the States in fine style. <laughs> That scheming Renier thought he'd be able to talk me into selling at his price. Now, be sure to take your rifle. All right. You got your list of supplies you want to buy? In my pocket. Oh, one thing more, Mary. Here's a box for Sergeant Preston. It's that silver buckle I made up for him. Good. I hope I see him. In case you don't, his name is written on the outside of the package. It's not much of a present considering what I owe that Monty. I'm sure he'll like it. Now, leave the box with McDuff if the... Preston's not at the crossings. I will. And uh, if there's a letter from Mr. Johnson, open it up. If it calls for an answer, and you can answer him and mail the letter while you're in town. I'm expecting he'll write and let us know when he's come to take over the post. All right, Dad. I guess I'm all set. No, you be careful, Mary. Don't worry, Dad. And don't forget Preston's pocket. I won't. Goodbye. <laughs> mush, you malamute. Mush. Get on here. Mush. Jack Rainier had been a gambler, and a crooked one until his various tricks with cards made him unwelcome in the Yukon settlements. While he made plans for a bigger score, he had taken over a deserted cabin halfway between the town of Pine Crossings and old Jed Norris's trading post. His wife, Dolly, had gone with him. Jack, listen to me. I... Dolly, it's no use arguing. I want Norris's trading post, and what I want, I get. But capture and marry Norris. That girl's never done anything to you. My plans are made, and Mary Norris fits right into them. If I'd only known you were bad all the way through... Save it, darling. You didn't marry me because you love me. I haven't been fooled for a minute. You just wanted to get out of the town so that Marty wouldn't find you. <laughs> uh, it's crossing all right. <laughs> And he's got the girl. Ah, good for him. I know I could count on him. Now, Jack, listen. Listen to me. Please change your plans. Please let that girl go. It's me that's asking. Ah, it. shut up, Dolly. Yeah, stir up that fire. It's getting cold in here. But go I'm... on. Do as I said. You're making a mistake. Your crooked gambling got you run out of the town. This trick of yours is going to get you run right out of the Yukon. Now, keep moving. Don't try to pull any tricks. Oh, you are certainly a brave man, but you wouldn't have a gun in your hand. Here she is, boss. She was making the supply trip right on schedule. Come in, Mary Norris. Make yourself at home. Jack Brunier, you'll never get away with this. I don't believe you've ever met my wife. 
Dolly, Miss Norris. What's the idea of sending a man to capture me, make a prisoner of me, and, and bring me here at the point of a gun? The rifle and this package was all she had in the sled, boss. The rifle will come in handy. See what's in the package. It's a yeah. gift for Sergeant Preston. He's a friend of mine. You don't say. He is. Oh. And when he hears about my capture, you'll be in more trouble than you can handle. <laughs> I'm used to threats. Dolly, you see if there's anything in the pockets. All right. You might as well stand still, Mary. Why was I captured? Why was I brought here? Hey, look at this. What is it? A silver belt buckle. Oh, so that's what you were taking to Preston, huh? <laughs> It's a gift from my father. Yeah, the fact that he was sending it to Preston means that he doesn't expect the Monty to visit the trading post very soon. Oh, that's just fine. Uh, anything in her pockets, Dolly? Just this. A list of things to get in town. I'll take it. Why, Now, look here, Miss Norris. You just follow orders and you won't get hurt. I want to know why I was brought here. I told your father I wanted to buy his trading post. At your price. That's right, my price. Well, my father has a buyer for the post who's willing to pay what it's worth. But, Mary, now I'm ready to increase my offer. I'm going to offer him the same amount of cash as I did before, and your life as well. Why, you... Now hold it, Brady. You hold still. Sit it down in that chair. Yeah. Dolly, get that hunk of rope. You wait. You just wait, Jack Rainier. You won't get away with this. Here's the rope. No. Yeah, now, we'll just tie you up so you don't make trouble. Dolly will stay here and keep an eye on you until we get back. Oh, you needn't see how tight you can make those ropes, Jack. Mind your own business, Dolly. All you've got to do is see that she's here when we get back. If you don't... I know. There. Yeah, that'll hold her. What about this buckle? Sergeant Preston's buckle. Give it to Dolly. She's always taught a lot of Sergeant Preston. It'll remind her of him. <laughs> a reminder of the way she double-crossed him. I'll take that buckle. We're all set, Breed. Get into your pocket and hurry up. It won't take me a minute. Yeah, it looks like a bad blizzard coming, and I don't want to get caught in it. I'll take the girl's rifle and dog team and her shopping list to prove to her father that we've got her. My, my father will kill you for this. Yeah, you're right, boss. The sky looks bad. Dark like anything. I'll be right with you, Braid. Dolly. Yeah? Get this. If anything happens so this girl gets away while I'm gone, the Yukon won't be big enough to hide you. You know what I mean? And you know I mean it. Yeah, Jack. I know you mean it. All right. Let's go, Braid. Well, kid, I'm sorry. Your husband must want my father's trading post mighty bad to go this far. He wants anything that'll make money. The ermine pelts that are trapped up here are worth plenty. I know that. My father buys them from the trappers. He pays fair prices for them. Jack will deal with the trappers like he deals with everybody else. They'll take it or leave it. Why doesn't he open up his own post? That'd mean competition. He won't stand competition. Besides, there's not time. Not time? No, he's got a contract lined up with a buyer in the state to deliver skins at the end of this season for a fancy price. He needs the post so he can get the skins. Trappers won't deal with him as he is now. They trade with your dad. Oh, of all the dirty... Mary, there's no use cutting your wrist by pulling against those ropes. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself, kid. Oh, I wish poor I... Poor dad... He was going to sell out, and then we were going back to the state. That was why he made the buckle for Sergeant Preston. It was, well, a sort of a farewell present. He'll sell out all right, but it'll be to Jack. Do you really want that buckle? Oh, I suppose you wonder what Rainier meant when he said I double-crossed Sergeant Preston. I'm not interested. I guess you and Jack have double-crossed a lot of people. Listen, Mary, in my time I've done a lot of things I've been sorry for. Nothing I've regretted as much as the deal I gave that Mountie. He's one of the finest men that ever lived. He certainly is. He staked me to go back to the States. Staked you? Yeah. I was a singer. I went to work in a dance hall up here. You sang in a dance hall? Yeah. The only men you see in those places are dirty, sweaty miners and the crooks that are out to take their gold. I didn't think I'd be there long. I needed money. That's why I took the job. But the manager of the place saw that everybody working for him stayed broke. 
He takes so much out of our pay for food and costumes. By the time he was finished, there wasn't much left. Oh. It's a rotten kind of life for anybody. I wanted to get out of it, out of this country. Then I got a letter from a friend in the States offering me a job. Well, why didn't you go? I didn't have the fare, kid. And that's when I met Preston. He came to the dance hall to arrest a man who robbed a bank in Big Rock. I got talking to the Monty. He lent me the money to go back home. I... I said I'd pay it back just as soon as I got to the States. What happened? <laughs> I thought I could double what he gave me on one of Rainier's crooked gambling wheels. And you lost? Why would I be here if I didn't? I was so ashamed to face Preston after that that I've been dodging the towns ever since. I married Jack, and we've kept moving. But Sergeant Preston would have understood. How could he, Mary? He was trying to help me get out of those places. He gave me a one-way ticket out of them. And I turned right around and got myself in even deeper. I couldn't face him now. My hair has grown in natural since I've seen him last, but he'd recognize me. I... I see. Oh, that's too bad, Dolly. I've owed Preston that money all this time. If he thinks of it, he probably figures I'm a deadbeat. I've worried about it many a time, trying to figure out some way I could repay Preston without letting him know I didn't take the chance he tried to give me. But I... What's wrong, Dolly? Kid, I've got it. I just thought of something. What? A way to pay Preston back, and I'm going to do it. There's a knife in this drawer back here. What are you going to do? You're in a bad way, honey. Jack knows Preston's a friend of yours. He don't dare let you go. But he'll have to let me go if my father meets his terms. He promised. Promised? <laughs> his promises don't mean nothing. He wouldn't dare turn you loose so you could tell about being captured. If you're here when he gets back, he'll kill you. Now, hold still. You're getting out of here. You're cutting the rope. I'm paying that debt I have owed Preston, kid. This will even things up. He gave me a break. I'm giving a friend of his but, one. But what about you? There. Now you're free. Stand up, Mary. I heard what he said when he left, Dolly. I'm sure he'll kill you. Jack! <laughs> Why, honey, I could handle that tin horn the best day he lived. Besides, I got a gun hit anyway. If he gets too tough, I'll kill him. I kid him along all the time. But he's dangerous. Oh, don't worry about me, honey. I can take care of myself. I'll get your coat. But what about the weather? They were talking about a blizzard. Here, yeah, now, get into your coat. There's a blizzard coming, all right, but it looks like it'll come from the north. You head south for the crossings. Go there and get Preston. Tell him to go to the trading post. Your dad might need help. Mary Norris started south toward Pine Crossings at a fast pace. Her concern for her father kept her traveling rapidly for a quarter of a mile. And then, almost imperceptibly, she began to slow down. Funny. The wind's dying down. Maybe it'll be easier now. But the ominous quiet was the calm before the storm. Suddenly... <gasps> as if at a signal from an unseen hand, the storm broke. A roaring, rampaging blizzard struck with stunning force. The storm, it, it's come. I, I can hardly see. Snow so thick. It's getting dark, too. Oh, I've got to go faster. I've got to get to the crossing. The wind drove particles of ice and snow like stinging needles to strike whatever lay in its path. Mary had her back to the blizzard. But it was even worse for two men, a sled, a dog team, and the wonder dog king who traveled in the opposite direction. The mighty king was blazing a trail into the very heart of the fierce Arctic blizzard for Sergeant Preston and a man named Johnson who was traveling north with the mountain. King looked back at his master through the snow, expecting at any moment to hear a command to halt. Run, King! Run, you hussy! The great dog wondered what could be so urgent that Sergeant Preston and this stranger traveling with him would continue bucking one of the worst storms the dog could remember. At last, the welcome cry came. All right, fellas. Rocky, okay. oh, you have to stop here, Johnson, until the storm dies down. Sergeant Preston, there's no shelter here. Don't even see any trees. See those drifts? They won't give us any protection. The wind's polished the surface to an icy crust. 
We can cut right through and scoop out the soft snow to make a shelter. Come on, get out your knife. Come here, King. You can help dig out the snow. What do we use for digging? Snowshoes. When we get this drift hollowed out, it'll be snug and warm inside. King helped scoop the snow from inside the snowdrift. Then the Mountie unharnessed his dogs, broke out provisions, and fed the team. King ate apart from the others. He watched the pack of huskies wolf their food ravenously while he finished his own dinner slowly. He watched his master prepare to wait out the storm and kept an eye on the team of sled dogs until they curled up beside the snowdrift. Come on, King. In here with us. Sergeant, what's that? A wolf, but don't worry about it. They won't bother us while King's around. That's it, fella. You settle down between us. You certainly know how to meet the wilderness. It's surprisingly warm and comfortable inside this snowdrift. I never expected to find shelter tonight. I wanted to cover as much ground as possible, but there's no use pushing on against a storm like this. We'll be much better off to spend the night here and shove on in the morning. Well, that suits me. I'm tired. Both men were soon asleep inside the snowdrift. But Mary Norris had found no shelter from the storm. Darkness as well as the blizzard had overtaken her. With the sky blotted out, her only sense of direction was the furious storm at her back. So tired. So hard to walk. Wind seems to be dying down. Which way was it coming from? I, I can't tell which way is north. <gasps> oh, Wolf, I don't dare stop. He'll, he'll attack close in. Gotta keep going. In spite of her resolution, Mary's weary feet stumbled. She fell, and then with an almost superhuman effort began to crawl, dragging herself through the snow on hands and knees. I can't do it. I can't go on. I've... I've got a rat. In the snug house of snow, the great dog King raised his head, listening. King heard the sharp howls of a wolf, and then a second wolf could be heard. But these were familiar and expected noises in the night. Then suddenly, the great dog's nostrils caught a scent that gave a new significance to the howls. King sniffed and tensed, then sounded an alarm. King, what is it, King? What's the matter, boy? What's the matter, Sergeant? Easy, King. What are you trying to do, drag me out of here? Is there anything wrong? King seems to think so. Uh, you heard something out there. I'll stick my head out. Still snowing? No, the snow stopped. I hear wolves, but nothing else. Quiet, fella. I want to listen. For an instant, King stopped breathing. He knew from the pitch of the wolf's cry that the ranging beasts of prey were out for blood. What the? It's a wolf. Breaking past the sled and sleeping dog team, King ran through the snow toward two prowling, lurking creatures he knew as enemies. He saw the gleaming eyes of the wolves closing in on a dark form lying on the ground beside a huge boulder. King barked a challenge as he placed himself between the wolves and a motionless form in the snow. The wolves snarled in acceptance of the challenge and leaped at the dog. The battle between dog and wolf began. King saw hatred in the flashing eyes and the threat of death and cruel fangs that tried to grip a vital spot beneath his heavy fur. The husky dodged and lunged, using every trick he knew. He leaped at one of the wolves, lashed out, and reached with his powerful teeth, then quickly turned to meet the other. One wolf would retreat while the other charged, and as King turned to meet the charge, the retreating beast would leap. King fought desperately so neither of the gray monsters could get a death grip with its fangs. Hold your fire, Johnson. Can't tell a shot from the wolf. King, this way, King. Get ground, fella. His fur bristling, King moved back a pace still protecting the form behind him. One of the wolves, half mad from a throat wound King had inflicted, hesitated. King's broken away. That's it, King. All right, Johnson, let him have it. They're running away. They won't stand up to gunfire. Steady, King. Let him go, fella. Why'd he go after those two wolves? I'll we'll soon find out. The answer may be over there. Yeah, there seems to be something in the snow. Come on, we'll find out what it is. It might be another wolf. 
I've heard that they'll turn on their own. Looks like an animal of some sort, but I don't think King would fight to defend a wolf. It looks about the size of a large wolf. Yes, but I... But... King watched his master reach down to turn over the furry form. The husky knew it was no animal. What is it? A girl in a fur coat. What? This is Mary Norris. Mary Norris? Yes. Is she alive? She's breathing and not wounded. Must have been caught in the storm. Traveling on foot, too. Yes. Well, I'll carry her to the shelter. Well, I'll walk ahead and make a wider path for you. All right. King, if this girl lives, she'll owe her life to you. <laughs> if she can just swallow a little warm broth. I wonder what she's doing so far from the trading post without a dog sled. We've got to take her someplace where she'll have better shelter and more warmth. She can't stay here. You're right, Sergeant. Well, the storm's died down now. Yes, I think we'll shove on to the trading post. See if you can get her to drink more of this broth while I harness the dogs. A short time later, King was breaking a trail for the team of dogs, while Sergeant Preston jogged alongside of the sled on snowshoes. Johnson rode the runners, and Mary Norris, still unconscious, lay in the sled heavily wrapped in blankets. On, King! On, you husky! The blizzard that had forced Sergeant Preston to seek shelter had also stopped Jack Rainier and his outlaw friend, Breed Clawson. It was midnight when the two finally reached Jed Norris's trading post. Norris, you hear? Coming right up. His room's all right back there. Yeah, probably turned in for the night. Well, what can I... Rainier. That's right, Jed. I've got a friend with me. What are you doing here? Hey, you don't seem glad to see me, Jeff. I'm not. Oh, that's too bad. I can't turn men out in the night, Rainier, but I can refuse to be friendly with them. You know where to find bunks. Get out the first thing in the morning. I'm here on business, Jed. I've got no business with you, and you know it. You and your pal have done too much stealing to get your furs. You will do well to listen to Rainier tonight, Norris. He has something to sell. I don't want anything either of you are selling. Likely store. Open the pack, Reed. I'm going back to my room. You gents go or stay as you please. You're here alone, aren't you, Jed? That's none of your business. Here. Take a look at this, Norris. A rifle? What about it? The girl who carried this rifle might have trouble getting home. That's my daughter's rifle. That's right. She had this list of things with her. You recognize this paper? What? Mary's handwriting. You've captured her. That's right. Jed, you wanted to sell your trading post so you and Mary could go back to the States. I'll buy it. I told you before I wouldn't sell at your price. <laughs> ah, things have changed. I offered you a couple of hundred dollars in cash. Now I offer you the same amount plus the life of your daughter. Why? We'll you... draw up the bill of sale, and you can be on your way. You'll meet Mary on the way to Dawson. Just keep right on traveling until you get to the States. You Never mind the comments. You've heard my terms. You can take them or leave them. If I... If I refuse... If I don't sell out to you... You know what will happen. You weasel-faced tin horn that ought to have been run out of this country, you... Do you sign or don't you? How do I know you'll keep your part of the bargain? How do I know Mary's not dead right now? Now, look, Jed, all I want is a trading post. Sign the bill of sale so everything's legal. And give me your word you'll clear out without going to the law, and I'll keep my part of the bargain. I don't want to kill Mary. But if you don't sign, I've got no choice. I'll have to kill both of you. If you just bring Mary here and let me see that she's alive... You've heard the proposition. I... I've got to think it over. There's no time to think it over. I've heard you got a buyer all lined up. That's why I want to close the deal now, my way. Are you going to sign? I just... All right, Rainier. I'll sign. Good. Hand me that pen there. Yeah, I get the pen for you. You're showing good sense, now. Good sense. Now sign your name on this line right here. Ah, now that's it, Jed. Rainier, if you've lied about Mary's being alive... She's alive. Now, Breed, you sir. Yeah. Wait, wait. Someone's coming. Let me look out the window. Can you see who it is? 
It's a Mountie. A Mountie? Preston. Give me that bill of sale. Hey, you don't have to snatch it. Listen, Norris. You want to see Mary again, get rid of Preston. Fleet and I will go into the next room, but we'll listen to every word. Come on, Breed. Be careful, Jed. Remember, we'll be listening. All right. How can I get rid of him? Hello, Jed. Come on in, Gaten. Hello. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Up late, aren't you, Jed? Uh, yes. Just about to turn in. Quiet, King. I know, boy. Anyone here, Jed? Why, no. Nobody's here. You sure? Oh, you mean the wet footmarks on the floor? I saw snowshoes at the door. I was out for a little while. Oh, I see. It was quite a blizzard we had, Jed. King walked at Sergeant Preston's heels, heading toward a door leading to another room. Good thing you weren't out in it. King and I had to take shelter till it blew over. Otherwise, we'd have been here before this. Sergeant, wait! Take him, King! That dog! Look out! He's jumping! Wait, Sergeant! No! I'll show you! Oh, you don't! Oh, Reed! Steady, King! Down, boy! Get this dog away! You're covered, Renier. I'll take that gun. How did you know we were here? I saw your tracks. But you made a mistake. There's no mistake. I've heard about the game you're playing. Drop your gun. What? Dread. Put that gun down before King jumps you. You know what's at stake, Norris. Keep that gun where it is. I'm sorry, Sergeant, but you have no reason for coming in here like I this. have reason to arrest these men. Breed Clausen's been wanted for a long time. No, no. Lower your gun, Jed. You don't understand, Sergeant. I can't. I'll say he can't. Jed, if you're thinking of Mary, she's safe. But... She told me Rainier would be here. What? Preston, you're crazy. She's on my sled. Johnson, the man who came here to buy you out, will be along with her any minute. Now, wait, Jed. Don't lower that gun. How do you know he's telling the truth? It's a trick. Hear those dogs outside, Rainier? They're no trick. You're finished. Oh, Dad, oh, Dad. Mary, you're, you're safe, honey. Oh, Dad, did Rainier hurt you? He was coming here. No, no, Mary, he didn't hurt me. Dad, a woman named Dolly helped me get away. What? She's married to Rainier. Dolly? Why, that double-crossing little... Wait till I get my hands on her. You won't have a chance to do anything. You're going to jail. Oh, Dad, she saved my life. Dolly, huh? I never heard of Dolly Rainier. Sergeant Preston knows her. Oh, yes, I do know her. I had heard that she married this gambler. Rainier told her to keep me at their cabin, but she let me go because she said she owed you a debt, Sergeant. She remembered, eh? Well, she won't regret it. I'll reward her. You won't have to, Jed. There's a reward out for Breed Clawson, and I'll see that Dolly gets it. It should be enough to take her back to the States if she wants to go. Oh, she does, she does. She can go back with Dad and me. We'll all go back home together. Well, Sergeant Preston, I see you got your man. Yes, Johnson, I did. My case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production brought to you each week at this time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Be sure to join us tonight for Gangbusters. Here's a radio program that brings you true dramatic accounts of crime cases taken right from police blotters in towns and cities all over the country. The exciting dramas broadcast on Gangbusters mention actual facts, names, and places, bringing to life the criminal cases you read about in your daily newspapers. Week after week, if you've tuned into this program in the past, you've heard actual police cases of brutal killings and bank robberies. You've heard petty thieves who cheat old people out of their savings and flag-waving racketeers who lead our youth to vandalism. You've heard what factors lead to crime, and you've learned again that crime does not pay, even for the smartest type criminal. So for thrills and suspense, don't miss Gangbusters tonight. When it goes on the air... Oh